Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel and you join us in Wales on a very, very peaceful little campsite. There's nobody here. We didn't think this was possible to find a little place all to ourselves in the middle of the summer in the UK. Sarah and the doggies will be in the vlog. So don't switch over and start watching someone else. She will be here a little bit later on. Um, it's not just gonna be me, so don't panic. Um, just to give you an update on what's been going on with us over the last week. In last week's vlog, we left you, um, giving you a little tour of our little off-grid land in Portugal. It's been a bit of a crazy week since then. We made it back to the UK, obviously. It was a long drive. It was like 3,000 kilometers from leaving our village in Andalusia. Every day driving, we took the tolls through France. We've never done that before. In our old van, Vinny, 33-year-old Ford Transit, it was never worth it. So we're used to driving through France, down little country lanes, driving through old towns and stuff, lots of speed bumps, very slow going. So it was very nice to take the tolls. A little bit expensive, like 150, 170, we haven't calculated it, but it's just such easy going. Apart from when you get to Rouen, you've got a low emission zone, and then we had to take a massive detour. That was probably the nicest, most scenic part of the journey down little country lanes through forests and stuff. But apart from that, it was plain sailing up to the Channel Tunnel. We've done this journey a few times up to the UK. Didn't get searched this time. We didn't get the van pulled apart and questioned and searched the whole van, but we did get scanned for bombs. Has anyone been scanned for bombs before? You drive onto a little sort of platform and they're scanning your van and you have to wait. It's a bit of fun. Obviously they didn't find anything didn't smuggle anything in but yeah we made it to the UK and then we had a final six hour drive to North Wales to go and see Sarah's sister in hospital who as mentioned in last week's vlog sadly passed away on Monday it's just so sad uh, Lisa dying so young she was 39 she actually made it to her 40th birthday which she had in hospital the nurses and doctors were great there. They put up bunting, people took her cards, they made little balloons out of like rubber gloves and they were so, so kind and thoughtful there, giving the siblings hugs and, and just kind words during this very difficult time. She was in ICU for, I think, nearly a week. We decided that we'd drive up instead of Sarah and flying back because obviously it's, it's easier to have, have the van and the dogs and me with her during these difficult times. Um, but yeah, Lisa, she, she died of a stroke. There were other issues and complications, which we won't go into now, but it's, it's just hard because it was Sarah's baby sister. Um, it has brought all the siblings together and they've all been supporting each other. There's um, yeah, two sisters and a brother here, so they've all sort of rallied together and, and been there for each other. It's been, a, it's been a crazy week. We feel like we've been in the UK for sort of months, like, and Sarah's sister's actually flown over with her husband um, from Australia. They would got arrived a few days before. All the family wanted to be together, so after we saw Lisa, we went to Betsy Coyd. Probably pronounced that wrong. But yeah, we went there so we could spend time together on that, that first night, which was very, very difficult. But yeah, Betsy Coyd, beautiful place. And the next day, the sun came out. It was very peaceful. We took a walk alongside the river. Beautiful walk, peace and quiet. Nice place just to, just to re reflect and, and think about Lisa. That was the Monday. And then since then, we've been here. We're not far from St. Asif. I think St Asif is like five, ten minutes drive away. And we've, we found this place for the first week, which is obviously really difficult. It's been very emotional, a lot of tears. Um, and yeah, won't go into too much detail, but you know, we've had to make phone calls. We're supporting um, Lisa's husband. Um, they were soulmates. They spent all their time together and it's very, very difficult time. So here we're not too, not too far from where Michael lives. So we've been going around and supporting him, discussing, you know, funeral arrangements and, and things like that. It's been nice to find this little place. We've been here all on our own. This is one thing we're worried about in the UK. Coming in the summer, we never planned to do this. Um, to come in the summer, peak time, kids are off school. We just thought it'd be hectic, crazy busy everywhere. I don't mind kids, but I don't want lots of screaming kids running around. We don't want it busy, especially in a time like this. We sort of wanted to get away from it all. And luckily we found this place. Sarah's sister's been staying in their little B&B &B there, um, which is very nice. It's been very peaceful, apart from the odd tractor and farming vehicle. 
Just to say it's peaceful, loads of cars go past. It has been very peaceful though. There's not much around here. We've got lots of picnic benches. There's no shower or toilet we've been using. Jenny and Ben's little B&B &B for that, which has been very handy. The owners have been fantastic. It's been great because we've had it to ourselves. The other siblings have been able to come over. Sarah's sister who, who lives here, she's come over with her husband and uh, their son. And we've, you know, we've played French cricket and football. We've been having two on two. Um, he, he's like nine, I think. So me and him, were, you know, we won obviously every time. We have actually ventured out though. We did make it out to Landidno. Thought we'd go to the beach and have a little walk there. A little bit busy, a little bit lot busy. Went to the pier, it was a little bit hectic there. Lots of crowds, lots of people. So we sort of left and walked away, walked along the promenade, got fish and chips on the beach. And then also went to, where did we go? Bodder, Bodder Withing Castle. Obviously with what's happened, it's been really nice to see some sun and to be able to sort of get out and have a little walk around and get some fresh air and, and just sort of take our, take our minds off things. It's, I don't know, it's, it's hard. You feel guilty for, for getting out and, and doing anything. And, but you've, you know, you've got you've to push on. Lise wouldn't want us to be, to be upset all the time. And, I'm open round. She was our biggest fan. She loved our videos. Um, yeah, got so excited when we when we put a video out on Thursdays. But now we've been here a week and it's time to leave the safety of this peaceful little campsite. There's actually a lot of campsites. We're surprised. We're looking around this area. There's quite a few park for nights, like free stops, which have got really good reviews. So that was an option. Um, and there's other little campsites, quite cheap ones, but we thought we'd check into this one because it, it just suited us so Sarah's sister can stay in that um, guest house and we can stay here and we can be together and have family over. But we are leaving here today. So yeah, I'll just see where Sarah is. Oh, there she is. You got, you got there then? Is that the rubbish you forgot to take? It's my laundry. Mm. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm okay. Charlie's just having a little sniff, sorry. I'm a little bit delayed takes him quite a long time just to go for a short walk um, yeah we've just got all of our laundry fresh from the week which is really good and um, yeah we are not sure what Nick's watch <laughs> he's what to go sorry and I just say the dogs have actually loved being here we've been lucky with the weather as I mentioned the sun's been shining most of the time Charlie Mo 50 50 50 50 Charlie's just been loving the grass, isn't he? He's just like, compared with our land, obviously, which is in the middle of summer in central Portugal, it's dry and spiky. Here it's just soft, spongy, green grass. There's a few molehills here, so he's been sniffing the molehills. We did actually have a hare, had an instant with a hare. The dogs were tied together, a hare came past, dog legged it to the other side of the campsite, nearly went through the bushes, managed to grab hold of them. But apart from that, no incidents, and yeah, they've just been enjoying lying on the grass, sunbathing, when the sun's been out, and just being, yeah, not driving every day. So yeah, it's been nice to just be parked up for a week. I think Nick's brought you up to speed of our first week here in the UK. Um, the van, actually, I don't know if he's mentioned the van, but the van's been really good. I don't um, think I have at all, actually. Yeah, the van, obviously, having the more space um, for us and the doggies, and also it's been lovely because my sister's been here in the accommodation and we've all sort of hung out and had barbecues and, and breakfast and things like that, and we've been able to prep food and things together inside the van. We've been doing the breakfast here, we? Yeah, we've actually been hosting. We, yeah. didn't, we didn't actually bring enough forks and things like that. We yeah. only expected it to be us kind of thing, so yeah. we're struggling with plates and bowls and that, but it's been quite good. We've been hosting like four, six, six people or something. We've used yeah. the air fryer, Had a of meals and coffee machines, and everything. Then, yeah, and then just having breakfast outside and, and we've actually all sat in here as well. So it's definitely nice. We couldn't have done that sort of thing in, in little old Vinster. Well, I mean, it would have been more of a struggle doing breakfast and things for four. What, or, four people in four, little Vinster? Yeah. It's only happened for a minute or <laughs> So it has been lovely to have the extra room and mm. we are starting to sort of settle into the van and it feels very quite homely already and we're starting 
starting to you know know where everything is and what little bits and bobs we need to add so that respect everything's been quite nice so as Nick mentioned we are um, leaving this location today um, back to the sort of real world because mm. it doesn't feel it's just been so quiet here like if we've been the only people on the campsite I think you probably mentioned yeah. Nick which is what, what we didn't expect in the UK going to a little campsite um, but it has been nice and it has been exactly what we needed for this first week um, so we're gonna do a little bit of a yep head towards Chester now and um, we'll update you when we get there. Yeah, just need to fill up waters. Might need to uh, do a better system here. Still learners, we're still learners. any out there currently there's loads over there so we have woken up this morning in bunny heaven like the dogs have been so focused oh there's one just by the gate charlie is living his best life right now there's so many bunny rabbits outside it's so cute and yeah he's just like fixated fixated is that a word fixated yeah, I think yeah. So fixated on on what's going on out there seriously um so yeah so we left um Tavern Win in St Asif there and we come to Chester we're on the outskirts of Chester in a very small caravan park again very quiet um and it's called Heathfield Caravan Park it's about 2 miles from town and we arrived here last night the weather on the way was just, it just started raining as soon as we left the last campsite and it didn't stop and it got worse, heavier rain as we got closer to here last night. We couldn't even leave the van. Yes, it rained and rained and then rained a little bit more. So we found this campsite um, just on Google Maps actually, just put camping in around Chester. Quite a few came up, called this one up and this one's, um, yeah. 13 pounds. 13 one, pounds. Three. So it's got, um, it's got a loo you can use and with a sink with hot water. It hasn't got a shower, but that's fine. Um, it's There's no electric hookup, but that's fine because we charged up in the last place, so we're good for a few days at mm. least. Um, it's very convenient. I think I just said it's like two miles. Two or, miles, or less yeah. less from right in the centre of Chester. Probably about 45, 50 minutes to walk into cycling next to nothing. So, yeah, yeah it's really good. Um, you can hear a bit of road noise outside because the A55 is not far away, but obviously that doesn't really bother us. And um, the best part about it is it's... Uh, Bunnies galore! <laughs> Even better than the bunnies, it's actually adults only, so they don't allow children on this little campsite. Um, we don't have anything against children, but... At Dizzy the, does. Dizzy does. <laughs> and obviously, um, it's nice to just have not have screaming children running about on their holidays at the moment. So, yeah, it kind of suited us, and it's dog friendly. And also my sister and her husband are staying um, in a hotel about 20 minutes walk away, so a few minutes drive. So it kind of suited suited our needs for well, while we're here in Chester. Coffee number two. Coffee number two. I think it's time for coffee number two. Take the doggies for a walk. We must be very, very careful with the dogs because of all of the bunnies and there's like chickens roaming and other little birds as well.
somebody's very excited. There is zero hesitation this morning. Usually the dogs are like, no. Did he? Scratching the door. Usually the dogs are like, no, we're not going out yet. But this morning they are waiting at the door. You gotta be careful, they stay on their leads. Do whatever you do. Be free. the boys all tired out after the excitement of the little walk searching for bunnies and little birdies bunny doubt <laughs> all bunnied, bunnied out. out well not really charlie's just gonna sit in the front now and look out for bunnies the whole day <laughs> sarah's got to go off with her sister to meetings and stuff do some arrangements this morning and nick is going to go and have a little bit of fun <laughs> we brought our little fold-up bike that just slots underneath there and I'm going to go and explore Chester quickly because uh, it started off all right but the weather's changing it looks like it's going to rain but I, we couldn't leave without um, exploring the little town city sorry city of Chester which has to be one of our favorite cities in the UK no definitely I mean we haven't visited all the cities but we love Chester so much and I think you've got about an 80 20 80% chance of rain, 80% chance that you're going to get rained on. I've got my umbrella <laughs> and I've got my waterproof, so yeah, I'm going to head off. All right, darling. See you in a couple of hours. Chester, what a beautiful little city. We haven't visited many in the UK, but this has to be one of our favorites. And it's so easy getting around on a bike. There's so many cycle lanes and stuff. You can cycle through the pedestrianized center in parts, I think. I haven't been told off. I haven't been pulled over, thankfully. But yeah, it's really easy to get around on a bike. Um, I think a bike is a must for van life, really. Um, we can just about fit this in our boot. Hopefully we'll be able to take two in the future um, because it just makes it so much easier getting around rather than spending a whole day walking around exploring. You just cover so much more ground on, on a little bike. Beautiful old town within the old Roman walls. So many little restaurants, bars, places of interest, so many historic buildings. It's just got so much history in Chester. Actually quite a few little free park ups you can stay at. There's one by the Groves and the Bridge, which just visited. Loads of motorhomes homes down there. I think that's pay parking. Um, I'm just cycling along this little path to where we stayed before which is just along the River Dee, next to a squirrel park. I don't think that's its official name, but it's a park and there's loads of squirrels. Really tame, um, and you can feed them and stuff, which is really, really cool. This is where we parked before, a little busier now, a little busier because we're in the summer, believe it or not, because it is cloudy and about to rain. But yeah, we were here last time in winter and there was no one parked down here at all. So guys, that was a little tour of Chester. If you haven't been here before, it's definitely worth a visit. It's a beautiful little city with so much history, so many beautiful old buildings, so much to see and do. I haven't even scratched the surface. 
haven't even brushed the surface. But I couldn't leave the city without having a little walk along these stunning walls and giving you a little bit of history. It's an incredible city. The highlights have to be these walls which span the whole city, two miles round, the oldest, best preserved, restored walls in Great Britain with only a 100 metre section which is left in ruin. Haven't found that yet. But yeah, so much to see. You've got the thousand year old cathedral, you've got the east clock tower, you've got the groves and the bridge. There's so many different sections, bars and restaurants along the canal, down the beautiful main old town with all the 700 year old Tudor style half timber houses. As I said before, it's one of our favorite cities. And we will be back many times in the future, especially at Christmas. You have to come here at Christmas, the Christmas markets, the lights, like the center is like you've stepped into something out of Harry Potter. It's incredible, yeah. But now I best get back to Sarah. I think she's finished with her meetings. So I best get back on the bike and um, head off. Oh, got a bit lost there. Following the walking path, but it took me on the main roads. So um, not advisable on a little bike. I've left Chester now, heading back to the campsite. Really handy that campsite is, I think it's only a half an hour, 45 minute walk into town or 15, 20 minutes on a little bike. Quite easy to get there. And then once you're in the city, it's not a massive distance to cover to walk around and see all the sights. So definitely recommend this little place. Bunnies, birds, nature, but really accessible to the city. Anyway, I best concentrate on the road. See you back in the van. And it looks like the campsite's filled out a bit. Looks like every little spot is taken. Um, it's only a small campsite, so yeah, it fills up quite quickly. Get his mic on. Oh, before you start, can I just point out how funky Nick's new jumper is? Look how cool that is. Picked it up from TK Maxx the other day. It's really nice. Love it. Yeah. Needed some bright colours because, yeah, mm. too many dark colours. Anyway, just got back before the rain kicked in. Sorry about that tour. Probably the, one of the worst tours that's ever been done on this channel. No, I'm sure it wasn't done. There's a lot of content, but yeah, just my head's, head's all over the place at the moment. So, you know, made loads of notes. I think I even didn't, didn't bother with the notes, didn't look at them. I think I even forgot to give you the history. I said I was going to give you some history and then didn't. So, on my little pad of prepared notes, a little bit of history about Chester. Did you know it was founded as a Roman fortress in the first century AD? That's which a is long crazy. time ago, isn't it? That's a long, AD. long time ago. Oh gosh, first century. And um, yeah, it's been, you've had Roman legionnaires walking along the walls. You've had Viking raiders wreaking havoc. And the Normans, was it? The Norman invaders conquered the Anglo-Saxons. Saxons and Chester was one of the last places to fall. Mm, you know that? I didn't know any of that. You've got the race course, which is the biggest race course in Britain. And you've got no, the- No, 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 isn't it the oldest? I stand corrected, it's the oldest race course in Britain, and it has the largest Roman amphitheater in Britain. Mm. And the clock tower is, um, is like the main gate, the old main gate to the city and the clock tower was actually created um, for the Queen to celebrate her jubilee. So there is quite a lot going on in Chester considering the size of the city because it's only a small city and the population is... 92,000 something something something. Less than 93,000. Small, quite small. Quite small, very mm. small for a city. Anyway guys, if you come to Chester, stay at this lovely little farm as well. I think so. We've actually seen on the map that there is quite a few campsites dotted around the outskirts. Obviously, this is the only one we've been to, but it's pretty good because it's so... You can, you can hear the road, you can probably hear it in the, in the distance there, but it's really close proximity and it's only £13 a night. We've actually met um, a subscriber of ours who's parked over there who we've had a brief chat with. Um, which is nice. Check this out, a little herb garden where you can help yourself to herbs. And there's about, well, the place is full of these apple trees. I presume they're eating apples. And also there's mistletoe growing in all of the trees. So here's a little fun fact you might already know, but mistletoe only grows in amongst other trees. And um, we found out this because my sister um, actually owns a Christmas shop 
in Australia called Under the Mistletoe. So there's a little plug for you, Jen. Um, so if you're ever in Canberra in Australia, check them out. And look how healthy and beautiful this mistletoe is. And it's in all of these apple trees. I just thought that was quite nice. That's two kisses in one video. Oh unheard my gosh. Unheard of, unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> won't continue don't worry it's not going to turn into a kissing channel it is starting to <laughs> rain again so i thought we'd better carry on in the van kissing that is carry on kissing in the oh, van right. oh back to the cozy little van Vinsta, we used to struggle in valton it's a lot easier it's a lot bigger and we're getting used to everything we've used everything and it's mm. just and um, during these this difficult time it's nice to have sort of all your comforts and the yeah. doggies are settled and everything so yeah we have so so much more do you want to come back up Diz? jump up then good boy hey. come on charlie go on charlie, go on, charlie. come on good yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we do have so much more space now for us and the doggies we really do it's we're enjoying living in in the van um and it's and it's all good Oh, watch out, Charlie. Watch the jumper, Charlie. Go on, jump over. Get your chubby bum in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we just wanted to say that um, a few people have obviously said to us in the comments and stuff, you know, have some time off. You know, you don't have to put videos out and things like that. Um, well, it's like a little bit difficult, but um, I think this is what we kind of do. And life isn't always um, big adventures and everything can't be happy the whole time. There is going to be difficult situations in life and down times. And I think it's important for us to share those as well as share the happy the happy fun times mm. and things so that's so yeah of... we feel that you know we've got it's like a family we have on here so we want to you know share the bad times as Ups well and, and the downs yeah so um, we so we will keep on putting the videos out they may be a little bit scrappy like this one mm. this one's been filmed over like, so many days and just yeah this yeah. is actually that little tour of Chester was just filmed about an hour ago and we're now it's about a few hours before we've got to upload the video. I mean we are looking forward to kind of say getting getting back to normal it sounds kind of doesn't sound right to say that at the moment if you know what I mean but um, we are obviously looking forward to doing some touring around the UK and um, you know making our travel vids again and things like that and um, and yeah and apart from the miserable weather that you guys have here mm. if you live here because it's been a little bit miserable a little bit miserable today this is the summer right yeah. <laughs> and i'm actually wearing know. my winter clothes it's not that cold though it is quite mild to be fair but we're wimps aren't we mm. so the jumpers are a bit because we're wimpy tara um, bought loads of summer clothes she brought <laughs> excessive amount of clothes overtook my clothes area and, 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 and she's only... like i've got no i've got no winter clothes all over i've got my thermal leggings and this is obviously a bit of a wimp winter jacket today but it is like 22 degrees in the van so i'm probably being a bit of a wind sorry we have had our heater on once <laughs> it is very nice in the van yeah. yeah but apart from that you know we are happy to be here in the uk it is it's nice to you know visit and we're looking forward to sharing some really nice places mm. um soon so um i hope you can stick around and um and we'll see you all next thursday so we won't be on this campsite. We won't be on this campsite. Or we might be for a little tiny bit of the vlog. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. Please stick with us. Um, we appreciate all the lovely messages. Take care. Look after yourselves. Tell a loved one you love them. Mm. Throwing them up. Tell them you love them. Give them a hug. And I'll just emphasise on all of the lovely messages you have sent over mm. the last couple of weeks. We really, really appreciate it. Appreciate it, and you know we are getting through those messages. So bear with us on that, and we're just very grateful to have this mm. community. And um, and yeah, so we'll leave it there, and um, we'll see you next Thursday. Take care, guys. See you next week.